Now these things are a reality. You're playing with them now, but when we were kids, we already, we were already imagining those things. Pepper's and, good. Huh? Pepper's okay. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh -oh. morning. Are you still all with your mouths full? You cannot mm -hmm. greet back. Okay. Hey, today's Friday already. Yay! Yay! It's the weekend. It's the weekend. What day is it today? What date is it today? The twenty-sixth. The twenty-sixth. The the yeah. Is it? Okay. The twenty-sixth. Saint Timothy and Saint Titus. Today. It's St. Timothy and St. Titus. Good. Yesterday was the Feast of St. Paul. We uh, failed to mention that. The great apostle St. Paul. Today is St. Timothy and Titus. Bishops. Okay. Very good. So, the gospel for today is still from St. Mark. Okay. Um, well, I'll only comment on the last sentence here. Because uh, our Lord is comparing, comparing the kingdom of God. Okay, to uh, or trying to trying to explain the kingdom of God to his disciples. So, you know, uh, in another uh, another gospel, our Lord says, uh, "No eye has seen, nor ear heard, what God the Father has prepared for those who love Him, okay? for those who are faithful to Him." So that's our Lord's way of saying that. Well, you know, uh, nobody knows. Okay? Only my Father in Heaven knows what He has prepared for you. And, um, and it's going to really be uh, tough to explain that because it's a supernatural reality. And since human beings are um, stuck with, their, with our materiality, with our material universe, we are so connected to our uh, bodily uh, uh, constitution uh, and our reality is many times, and not only many times, is, is, is connected always to the reality of the world around us, which is a material world. It is really <clears throat> hard to conceive of how heaven might be like. Right? That's why our Lord said, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. See, our senses can only perceive what is material. See, eye to see, ear to hear. So... It's only we're only we're material beings, and so our way of knowing things is based on what our senses can perceive. Okay? Our Lord is very philosophical. See, that's that's where Saint Thomas gets all of his uh, explanations of uh, of his philosophy. Okay? It's really from our Lord Himself. Okay? No eye has seen, no ear has heard. That's very philosophical in the sense that we know through our senses. Okay? We know things through our senses. So how can we know the kingdom of God when we cannot sense it? See? But our Lord said, in my Father's house there are many mansions. Oh, so that's one of the closest, one of the closest things he could explain it uh, uh, with, right? That a mansion. So it's not just an ordinary house. It's not a small little abode. It is grand. It is big. It is magnificent. It is awesome. Right? A mansion. Okay. So, a big, big place to dwell in. So, our Lord says that. But then, He also compares it to other things. And, and like what? So, in this gospel today, He compares it to a plant. To a seed. Okay? That, that when you plant, like the mustard seed, you plant it, it's one of the smallest seeds. But when it grows, it grows big, humongous, and, and it accommodates all the birds of the air, and they dwell in it, and they nest in it, and, and all that. See? So it becomes big and grand, but it starts small. It starts small. And he also uh, compares it to, to grain, right? Grain, small seeds, small grain. When you plant it, it grows tall and big, and, and it has big leaves, so it becomes big. So our Lord uses these, these parables to compare and to try to explain the kingdom of God to his apostles. But you see, that's as far as it goes. Why? Because our Lord can only explain things based on what we might be able to imagine using our senses, using the material world that we are used to. Okay? 
because that's all that we can see and hear and experience and touch. Okay? So, <clears throat> but that's not all there is to it. Okay? That is not all there is to it. Definitely, uh, that's not what the kingdom of God is. There's more to it that we cannot perhaps imagine uh, just by such descriptions. Okay? Just by those kinds of descriptions, it's really quite hard to even imagine what the kingdom of God might be like, what heaven might be like, right? But, but, you see, you see, there's a secret that, that Jesus uh, uh, did with his disciples. And the secret is in this last, the last sentence of today's gospel. When he says, without parables, he did not speak to them. Without parables, he did not speak to them. Meaning, to them, to the disciples and to everybody else, right? Uh, to the crowds, he always tried to explain the gospel and the kingdom of God using stories, using parables. Jesus was the great storyteller. Teller, okay? Jesus was a great storyteller uh, who explained the kingdom of God by using parables, stories. But to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. Okay? St. Mark tells us, to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. What does that mean for us? Eh? What does that mean for us? And what does St. What does Mark mean by this? What he means is, to those who are intimate with him, to those who have an intimate relationship with Jesus, to those who talk to him all the time, to those who are in his inner circle, to those who communicate with him often, to those who or with whom he shares a bond of love, to them he, exp he is able to manifest a little bit more. He is able to show more. He is able to explain to them deeper and in a more concrete way and in a more personal way what his gospel message for them is all about. See? <clears throat> it's kind of like <clears throat> our own experience here. Just among us, we talk about many things, right? I talk about things to you that sometimes I tell you, well, you don't need to talk about this matter this way with other people, right? You, you, you recall that? There are certain things like that that sometimes I explain to you and I tell you, I caution you, right? I caution you about uh, talking to other people in the same way that I'm explaining it to you. Why? Because they will not understand. They, they will not understand. The context at which I explain things to you is for your consumption. Because we have a relationship here that will help you understand where I come from, what I'm trying to explain to you. Right? So it's kind of like the way Jesus is dealing with his disciples. So those who are intimate with him, those who are close to him, those who enjoy a bond with him, get to hear more. Get to deepen their understanding of the gospel. See? They, get to, they get to have a, a better, a broader understanding of what the message of the gospel is for them. They get to know God the Father a little bit more uh, uh, intimately. Right? So what is the practical application of this for us? What's the practical application of this for us? Okay. What, Joe? Have a deeper love and devotion to Jesus. Have a deeper love and devotion to Jesus. Very good. Very good. See, if you want to benefit more from what the gospel teaches you, okay, if you want to benefit more from what uh, our Lord talks about in the gospels, we have to have a deeper relationship with Jesus. We have to have a deeper devotion to Jesus. And how does that happen? 
How does that happen? Prayer. Through prayer. Sophia, very good. See? Through prayer. Okay? And that is why it is important that we spend some time in private prayer. See, our Lord says, He explains these things to His disciples in private. Not in His public preaching, but in private. In an intimate way. In a one-to-one -one relationship. In private. So you would imagine how our Lord must have taken his disciples one by one. Okay? In many parts of the gospel, you would see Jesus talk, uh, 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 the gospels talking about how Jesus took three disciples with him all the time when he wanted to uh, be secluded. When he wanted to uh, only express himself in a certain way to three very special disciples. Who are these? Peter, James, and John, right? The three apostles who enjoyed a very special relationship with Jesus. Even among his apostles, there were these three who, uh, who he took more often with him. And to them, he communicated perhaps deeper things. Okay? He, they were the three who were in the transfiguration, for example. Okay? Uh, uh, and, and other uh, scenes in the gospel, you would see these three. Okay? But I would like to think, I would like to think that he must have taken each one of them one by one and still in, uh, uh, talk to them one by one about the, the message of the gospel because he had to prepare each one of them uh, very well. He had to make sure that each of the 12 were really very well formed and very well prepared so he must have taken time to teach each one of them and talk to them in private and he can do the same with us and we should do the same with him that is why it is important for us to spend those periods of the day in private prayer with jesus okay? and we do that we do that every day Okay? We do that every day already, okay? especially when we are in front of the Blessed Sacrament in adoration. Right? But you know what? You can extend that period all throughout the day. Okay? You, can still some find, you can still find some moments during the day to actually you know, sit down and maybe open up the gospel again for that day. Okay? You all have your missiles. You can open up the gospel again for that day and start reading again and start asking Jesus again, what, what do you really mean for me in this gospel? Okay? What is it you have for me to learn in this gospel today? Okay? And you start meditating on it. You start talking to Jesus and just asking him openly. Okay? And then think about it for a, a few minutes. And hopefully our Lord will tell you things. For your practical application eh, of how you're going to apply the gospel message to your life that day okay so and then of course you know one other moment is like this after we do this in the morning then we head off to mass we have a few minutes there before mass what do you talk to jesus about while you prepare for mass you can already talk to him about the gospel message that you that you already heard at breakfast time Okay? And you can try and ask him, how can I put this into practice in my own life? Okay? How can I live this today better? Okay? So that is the way that we can live the Gospels and make it a reality in our own lives. Okay? And that's the same thing I'd like to advise you folks who, um, you know, uh, plenty of you uh, go to Bible study, right? So Bible study is a very popular thing. We have, we have it all over the place. Bible study, Bible study. Well, you know, all of those things are good, are good. But the Bible, the Word of God was not meant to be studied only academically. It is not a piece of literature that uh, we should only try to, uh, to understand and discern in an academic sense. I would really encourage those of you who, um, who do Bible study, okay, for those who don't, maybe you can start doing something like that. And for those who do Bible study, well, go beyond that. Go beyond just the academic uh, exercise of studying.
the Gospels and, and, and the Old Testament and, and all of the contents of the Bible. Go beyond that and, and use the same texts, use the same Bibles, use the same parables to go deeper in and trying to understand how that Bible, how that particular segment of the Bible you're studying can and should influence and affect the exercise of your faith on a daily basis. And that you can only do in prayer. When you take those texts of the Bible and the Gospels in personal prayer, where you can reread them calmly in the presence of God and consider the message that God might be conveying to you during those intimate moments of prayer. So praying using the Gospel text is a very, very nice way of being intimate with Jesus and getting to know Jesus more and really making the gospel message real in your own lives. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Hi, Lito. I have a friend, Lito, who's uh, listening to us. It's evening there. Good evening to you or good night in a few minutes. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. See you next week because today's already Friday, right? Yeah. We'll take a break for the weekend and we'll see you hopefully next week. Bye. Have fun over the weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Shabby. Bye. Bye.